So I have something for you that'll definitely get you out of your chicken rut. My Nashville hot chicken that will surely wake up your taste buds. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button for future episodes. This is a whole chicken. I've cut up the chicken into pieces. You can have a butcher do that if you don't want to, but you know, you can use really any piece of chicken you want. I personally like wings. A lot of people in my family, we like wings. So you can do all wings if you want as well. Now I'm just gonna start adding flavor to this chicken. I am going to put some salt on one side. There we go. Add some pepper. There we go. Sprinkle some pepper on top. I'm actually gonna put this in the refrigerator overnight. And I'm doing that because I am going to add a liquid marinade onto this. And I don't want the salt and pepper to fall off. Putting it into the fridge overnight will seal the salt and pepper. Perfect. So next, we're gonna create our liquid marinade. I'm using some buttermilk. And I'm just gonna add it to this mixing bowl here. Oops. <laughs> My, what is it, hand and eye coordination is terrible. Thank God I'm not a basketball player or a baseball player. Oh, I would stink. So I have a little tip for you guys. If you don't have buttermilk, no worries, that is okay. You can use a teaspoon of lemon juice for every cup of milk. Now I'm gonna add an egg. And then I'm gonna add, does anybody know what this is? Pickle juice. <laughs> now you know how much I love pickle juice. When I was pregnant with both of my children, Cree and Cairo, oh my gosh. I would drink the whole jar of pickle juice. Oh, it's just so good. It's so flavorful. So it is gonna add so much flavor to this chicken. Trust me on this. Stir. This is my hot Nashville chicken, so I am gonna add some spice to this to make it really nice and hot. Spicy, spicy, let's make it hot. So I'm just gonna add like two tablespoons. It's about one, two. If you don't like things too spicy, just add half the amount. So I've taken my chicken out of the fridge. Now it's time for me to pour my marinade on top of the chicken. This is just gonna add so much flavor to the chicken. I don't like boring chicken, okay? Nobody likes boring chicken. Bland chicken, no, 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 no. That's kind of like what my, my daughter will go, no, 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 no. She's so cute doing that, you guys. Oh my gosh. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see my daughter make a guest appearance on the show. I can't believe it, she's one. Can you believe it, one already? And she's hit so many new milestones, like the no, 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 no. <laughs> now I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge for another two to four hours. And I know it seems like a lot of steps for this recipe, but I am telling you, it is so worth it. This will be a great recipe to do over the weekend. Prep on Saturday and you can serve the dinner on Sunday. It'll be perfect for maybe a Sunday brunch. I know I love me some fried chicken in the morning with some waffles. I mean, come on. So now on to making our coating for the chicken. I'm gonna add some flour, and then I'm gonna add some cornstarch. Now, I like adding cornstarch whenever I'm frying chicken because it makes the chicken really nice and light and crunchy. So I'm not gonna leave the coating like this just with some cornstarch and some flour. I'm gonna go the extra mile and add some more flavor to this. I'm gonna add paprika to give it that nice smoky flavor, and then I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Love me some garlic. Garlic makes anything taste better. And then I'm gonna add some salt. And again, this is not your boring, just regular coating, okay? We want this chicken to be bursting with lots of flavor. And this will do just that. Now I'm just gonna mix all of this together, just like that, and then we have our coating. All right, you guys, now for the fun part. I love doing this whenever I'm frying chicken. It's like a production, okay? I'm gonna start an assembly line here. So I'm just gonna move my chicken over to here. It has a really nice marinade. And I have my chicken right 
I have my coating, and then right here, I have a sheet pan with a rack. I do this because if you were to just put your chicken onto the sheet pan, when you remove the chicken to put it into the oil, all of your coating is left on the pan. We don't want the coating on the pan. We want the coating to stay on the chicken, right? <laughs> so here's a tip for you. I like to use my right hand for the wet, right, and my left hand for the dry. I don't like to use both of them for both things because what will end up happening is all of your coating will end up on your fingers. What a waste! We don't want it on your fingers. You want it on the chicken, right? We want really nice, crispy chicken. So when you bite into the chicken, you want to hear a crunch. I'm going to take my chicken, my wet chicken, and I'm going to put it into my dry like that. And then I'm going to use my left hand. There we go. I grew up frying chicken in my household. One of the things that I would love to do with my mom in the kitchen, she would always fry chicken. It was cooking collard greens. I would help her with that. And then another would be frying chicken. And my job as a little girl, when I was like maybe eight or 10 years old, was to season the chicken. But you know, back in the day, we would season the chicken in the sink. I don't know if that was like a good thing, but I just remember my mom throwing all of this chicken in the sink and then she would just be like, go for it. And she would trust me with seasoning, you know, the chicken. She would do the frying, of course, because I was too young to be over a, a hot pot of grease. <laughs> I have some amazing memories just being in the kitchen with my mom making fried chicken for the family. So you can totally just do one coat, but if you want to do it the Tia way, we're going to go the extra mile and do two coats. Because I want some really, really nice, crispy chicken, and doing the extra coat will give me that. After I finish coating my chicken, what I like to do is I like to let it sit on the rack for 15 minutes. And I do this because I want the flour to basically adhere to the chicken. Because I find that if you don't do this step, when you throw your chicken into the oil, all of the flour will come off of the chicken. And we don't want that. We want to bite into this chicken and we want to hear that nice crunch. Now it's time to get this party started. My oil is in front of me. It's really nice and hot. I know a lot of you guys don't have a lot of thermometers at home, but it's really important that your oil gets really nice and hot. And how you can test your oil if you don't have a thermometer is you just take a wooden spoon and just place it into the oil. And when you start to see it bubble like that, you know it is ready to go. It is A-OK -okay to start frying some chicken. You know how much I love a good sizzle. So now I've added the leg quarter. Now the leg quarter is dark meat, and this is gonna cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's gonna take a longer time. And a little tip for you, if it starts to brown a little too much, you don't have to leave it in there. You can actually finish it off in the oven. Another tip with frying chicken is you don't wanna overcrowd the pan. And you don't wanna do that because you wanna make sure that the temperature stays at 350 degrees. If you put too much chicken in there, it'll bring the temp down and you're not gonna get some really nice crispy chicken. This is looking great. So now I'm just gonna put it over to my rack and let the oil drain. So again, they can stay really nice and crispy. Who's ready for some fried chicken? Now I'm gonna make an incredible glaze for this awesome fried chicken. And this puts the hot in my Nashville hot fried chicken. You ready for the heat? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna add some cayenne. And again, you can put as much of it as you want. If you don't want it to be too spicy, just use less. I'm gonna add some paprika to add some smokiness flavor to this again. And then to cut down on the heat, I'm gonna add some brown sugar and it'll also add some sweetness to this. Make it nice and sweet. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. So I'm just gonna mix all of this together so that everything is combined. We have some smokiness in there, some heat, and some sweetness from the brown sugar. And now I'm gonna add some oil to this. And this is the oil that I've used to cook the chicken in. So it's still nice and hot, so be careful. So now I'm just going to add the hot oil and the heat from the oil is gonna help melt the brown sugar and help create this nice little glaze we have going on here. My mother, whenever she would fry chicken, she would actually save the oil. She would store it in containers and she would put it in the pantry for later use. 
at first I was like, mom, what are you doing? But the smell from the oil is bringing back these memories. But you know, she would just recycle the oil and she would use it again because all of the flavor from the chicken that she had cooked in it, you know, prior, the flavors were still there. <laughs> so now I'm just going to put this nice glaze and rub it onto my chicken. Look at that. Oh, ha, 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 ha. oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> this is making me happy. So you can totally serve this with some pickles on the side, some extra dipping sauce, and if you want an incredible side dish, check out my creamy mac and cheese. Just click on the annotation right there and I'll see you over there.